Hey there, viewers. Welcome back to another episode of Ray of All Trades. Next on the bench is a Steel 029. Its complaint is lots of oil. It just oils, even when it's not supposed to be oiling. It just oils. Let's get it checked out. Let's start by digging into the oiler. Man, that's tight. Not the band. There we go. It's just all the junk built up around the flywheel. Excuse me, the uh, clutch drum. And the clutch drum roller bearings. We're going to clean that up when we get to it. Let's go ahead and get this clutch off. It comes off reverse thread. While the compressor's filling up, we're going to take off that clutch. The oiler's down underneath there. Um, a couple of main places you want to check first off. One of them being inside here. There is a little grommet right there at the end of that screwdriver. Make sure that hasn't fallen out. Um, that will cause it just to pour oil out of the front right here. That's the first one. Second one is there's an oiler hose that comes from the bottom here and I have a feeling that's probably our problem because it's really saturated in here and it's not really wet up in here where the oiler normally oils. So I have a feeling that it's going to be the hose that comes from the oil tank up to the pump. Um, so it might be a little premature getting into the clutch area but I want to check it anyhow. So because I'm going to be cleaning all this out but um when we get to it, it's probably going to be pull off the handle, and it's probably going to be that oiler hose that comes up from the bottom. So reverse thread on the clutch. So I'm just tightening to make it come loose. Pull that off. Here's my oil pump. There's the rubber hose that I'm talking about that I'm going to be uh, that comes out the bottom. This comes out the bottom and then comes up into the tank right here. So it's, um, it's not really saturated up in here. Extremely dirty. Yeah, don't get me wrong, we're going to clean all this up. Um, but we're going to have to change out this hose. So let's go ahead and get the handle off. T27s all around. One underneath this big pile of junk right here. Should do it. And that oil hose I was just talking about, 
is right here. Let's go ahead and make sure all the oil is emptied out of this thing. If it's been leaking, I'd be surprised if there's any in it. Nope, it's pretty much bone dry. So, I'm just going to put that on to keep the dirt out while I clean this thing up. But uh, to pull that oiler out, the oil hose, which are normal wear items, just pop this grommet out. Let's get some of that dirt out of there so it doesn't end up in the tank. I'm gonna use my phone to shoot this video. Pull that out. The oil filter is gonna come out the hole. There's a pretty good chance that this hose is cracked somewhere. So anyway, that comes up through the bottom right here. Goes to the bottom of the oil pump, right there. And that's what that oil hose looks like. I was looking to see if I see any cracks in it, anything that would be telling me that there's a bunch of oil that could leak past. I'm not seeing any large cracks in it. it. Means I'm probably still gonna be pulling out this oil pump unless the case has a crack in it. So, cause that grommet there, that seals up right there, doesn't really have uh, show any signs of it leaking excessively past there. Something tells me that, that oil pump is probably shot. Let's go ahead and pull out the oil pump. So we're gonna pull out the oil drive gear. It's plastic, be careful with that thing. Two, is it two or three? Side there you see that uh, white barb sticking down there um, at the bottom down here there's a white barb there it has an o-ring on it um, that o-ring is what lines up with this part of the pump and that absolutely can leak as well um, and then of course the body of the pump can also leak and I believe there's supposed to be a cap on the end of here that is missing. So let's get a new um, oil pump ordered for this thing. Uh, apparently it's been leaking a while rather than trying to just get that one O-ring there. And because uh, like I said, I'm fairly confident there's supposed to be a plastic bushing on the end of here that's supposed to keep that oil uh, from coming out of here so there's your adjuster for the oil pressure right there um, and it allows a certain amount of play from that shaft to decide how much oil is going to be allowed to come up through this pickup down here at the bottom and come out this area here which pushes it up into this part of the saw right there so because that white barb connects just up to here so let me get an oil pump ordered 
get this thing cleaned up and uh, put it back together. Okay, guys, parts came in. Um, I could not find a kit that had uh, that particular style um, oil line. Like I said, I'm fairly confident that our problem is that the oiler, the old oiler, is missing that plug. See, this one's got a plug. That one's missing it. There's nothing to stop that oil from traveling through here and dumping out of here. So there's your oiler adjustment. And uh, anyhow, like I said, I think that that's probably our culprit. So let's get this one installed and see if this fixes our problem. So drop this. And we're gonna shove that hose up through, up through there. I'm gonna shove the hose up through the bottom to make sure that we're in a, a good alignment. And then just massage that uh, grommet into place. I was told this saw has been leaking for some time. So it's very possible that that cap came off. Nobody knew what it was and tossed it. Okay. Got our oiler up through there. Let's get this turned. While I have access to everything, let's see if we can get this. This piece out and that actually had a really good seal on it. I was thinking I was going to change the O-rings out. It had a decent seal to it. So it goes on just like that. Where's some lubricant? Right, just a little bit of, a little bit, a lot of bit, whatever you want to call it. Uh, WD-40. Work it on in there. Once it's in place, turn it. Yeah, I think if I changed that O-ring out, I don't think I'd have got it in there. That thing was really set. Um, let's put some lubricant on that one. That has to match up with an O-ring as well. And that O-ring is dirty. Tell you what couple things I want to show you how to get to it and I want to really get a good close-up look of it so pull off your chain brake cover All right. and let me get something to point with You guys see down in here. I'm not sure if you can. Can you guys see down in there? That o ring right there at the bottom of this on that white nub, um, that o ring there seals up against this. So we want to make sure that that's clean. and in good shape. Actually, it looks pretty decent. Um, all right, I had every intention of uh, replacing some O-rings. They're not necessarily always going to be the same size, so you want to make sure that they're definitely in need of changing when you go to do it. So let's slide that on. Let's slide that on. All right, pair of hemostats. Get those in place. 
Let's anchor the pump in place real quick and then I want to knock a little bit more of this dirt out. Just get anything that's going to stop it mechanically from working off of there. Cooler saws run longer, run better. And you absolutely could spend five hours cleaning this up, making it look like a showroom condition again. Um, I generally knowing full well that this for your first time you started it's going to get that way again i generally just fix them get them mostly back together as far excuse me mostly clean um to know that they'll run like they're supposed to and then i let the owner figure out if they want to enter it into a contest a show contest otherwise the Labor rate for cleaning it would outweigh the way, outweigh the cost of the saw. Let's make sure that the oiler gear is in good condition, cleaned up. Make sure it moves like it's supposed to. This one, does this one not have the plate? Go back and look at my video. Okay, this one did not have the plate on it. Um, I'm not the first one in here. So I don't know, I'll have to look at this serial number on the other side. I have to look at the serial number to determine if this one had a plate. I thought most of them did. Clutch goes on, reverse thread. 19 millimeter. Use a three eighths, I use a three eighths impact so that it doesn't overdrive it. That oiler gear that you saw me put in lines up with that hole right there. So when you put it in, look for the oiler arm, line it up with there, drop it in and that's how you know it fits. If it doesn't line up, you'll never be able to get the uh, e-clip on without bending something so let's get that ridge of junk out of there it's just sawdust that's built up on both sides of the clutch itself
You want to make sure it's clean though. Um, because that surface on the inside there is what mates up with your clutch and your clutch is what drives the power from the motor to this, from this to your chain. So you definitely don't want grease in there either. There was some uh, reason I'm saying that there was some grease in there. So line up my arm. Drops in. If you can't get this roller bearing to drop in after the fact, sometimes you have to put it on first and then put this on. But it's usually not too difficult to drop it in just like that. Then this plate goes on. If you had a rim sprocket, it would go on now. Um, and then the E-clip goes on after there. We have my van pliers. These, no kidding, they are the best pliers in the world. Um, don't take my word for it. Watch the videos and stuff. These things, I, I'll put them in the description. They are just a fantastic tool made in Japan. Um, I've been very happy with them. I've only got this one size right now. I plan on buying more. They're not cheap. Um, but, uh, uh, I mean, they're cheaper than my snap-on stuff. They are fantastic material and, uh, they can grab stuff. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they're fantastic. So, by the way, not a sponsor. Let's get the handle on. <laughs> Dirt everywhere. the little plugs there and there and then there's one down here oh I didn't put that screw in where are you at there you are one right there and then there should be for the handle. One there. Okay. Okay, what we need to do is get some oil and some gas in here. Let me see, she's got gas. I'm not sure how old it is. Let's 
get some oil in it. So my next step is going to be to start it up, make sure that I get oil out of that hole right there. Um, that'll tell me that it's oiling, it's pushing the oil like it's supposed to. I'll shut it down, wipe it off, and then we're going to set it on the bench and let it sit uh, for a little while and see if it's leaking any oil. And on choke, hopefully she fires up. I don't know how old that gas is. rolled give it one click up if you if I pulled it one more time with it in the down position it would flood so it has to go one click up So the oil leak slowed down tremendously on this uh, 029. However, I can't help but notice that the oil that was traveling down here should not have made it to this area. And I'm, I also noticed that this dog is wet in this area and the screw appears to be somewhat loose. I'm actually curious if there's something going on right here. Definitely saturated. The screw appears to be somewhat bent. This is the back side of that oil housing. And the plastic is somewhat chewed up. Yeah, see that? The plastic is um, somewhat chewed up, like the screws are, I don't know if somebody put something in there or if they screwed it in off-centered or what. Let's clean some of this up. I mean, I could be chasing nothing, um, but I'd like to run it down if that's the, if there's a potential that, you know, it could be a comeback. Like I said, it just looked a little bit more wet than it should. It could be nothing. Found the leak. It's coming right out of that uh, screw hole. So there is something wrong with um, Yep. It's coming out good now since I uh, added some air pressure to it and cleaned it out. Boy, how are we going to fix that one? 
looks like because somebody ran the screw in um, offset the I'm guessing that the threads have punctured that casing and I mean I doubt that was a temperature thing that you know pushed it in there I think somebody just wasn't paying attention and ran the screw in the wrong way yeah that's definitely our problem let's get the oil out of it and try to figure out how we're gonna how we're gonna fix it I have a feeling that any fix that we do that will be permanent um, because the proper fix is obviously to change the casing. So I'm thinking that any fix that, uh, any fix that I can do anything with will likely be some sort of epoxy or something that will prevent this from ever coming off again, this dog from ever coming off again. I'll have to see what the owner wants to do. So I think this one well, I still think it needed that pump because it was uh, missing that piece on the end. I just don't know that that was our biggest contributing factor to the leak. I think based on the complaint, what I'm finding here, everything else that we were dealing with a ruptured, ruptured case right there. All right, so normally if it was just a regular hole, I would say we could put some 1184 on there. It would probably hold, um, you know, go on about our day and just say, keep an eye on it. Um, because I'm missing some plastic here because of the way it was threaded in, I think I would like to put some um, plastic epoxy and go ahead and tighten it up and I, it'll be a permanent fix. I get it. I'm trying to build up that spot of plastic that's missing. I don't know if you guys can see that. So it's a, it's almost the size of another bolt off to this side over here. Um, so let me try to mix up some epoxy and let's see what we can do with that. All right, let's mix up some of this epoxy stuff smells terrible that's how you know it works Okay, I've got epoxy squeezing out all the way around here, out around here. Um, like I said, I'm expecting it to be a permanent fix. I, I get it. You never want to make something permanent like that, but um, this might actually solve the problem. 
So I'm going to open the oil cap on the other side to help this thing uh, vent and dry, which means I'm going to have a, a little bit of a oil mess here. Let this dry up and uh, we'll come back tomorrow and check it. Okay guys, it's been sitting for uh, several days now. Um, yeah, she's looking pretty dry. I think we might have got this one. Put the cover on, put the bar and chain back on, sharpen it up. Get it back to them. Um, new oil pump and uh, put some epoxy inside this uh, groove right here because whoever put the screw in put it at an angle and the screw threads actually work through the case. Um, epoxy dried up really well and uh, it wasn't much. I mean, it was just it was a pl some plastic epoxy and like I said, it was just the threads that had cut their way through because it went in at an angle. Um, new oil, new oil pump with a cap on it. I did save the old one, but uh, yeah, I've I've seen those uh, oil pumps just leaking like crazy when that cap falls off of them. So one of my one of my other videos has one just like it. Steel O29 oil leak, pretty easy. Um, well, somewhat easy. Changed out the oil uh, pump, went through the passages, checked the lines, things like that, and then. Uh, Pulled the screws out of that uh, bar. Wouldn't have expected that one, but um, uh, like I said, kind of an easy repair. Put some epoxy in there. That epoxy is most likely going to keep that uh, that uh, the dogs from coming off of there. Um, I don't intend to pull them off of there. Usually, once they're on, you don't have to pull them off. Hope you guys got something out of the video. If you did, smash that thumbs up button for me and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for hanging out.